Good morning, Remy. Good morning, Brick. Sorry, see the palm of my hand here. Still having a little camera issues this morning. Breck wanted to look like the 90s glamour shots when we first got on. She was very soft, kind of blurred out. We're going to take you guys back to the 90s here. We don't have big enough hair for the glamour shots, though, right now. No, and I would never, I will never have big enough hair because mine is so thin and wispy. Wispy. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with the Cowgirls. I'm Brett Kruger. And I'm Remy Greer. Remy, did you happen to hear about the fires in Arizona last night? I think they started yesterday afternoon. Yes, and tis the season for fires because we're now on. No. We don't we don't have big fires going on right now in California because it's actually not fire season for us. But we've had a lot of like 50, 100 acre fires in the last week. Well, when I first heard about it, I reached out to a few different people to make sure that they were okay. And they had told me that it was like 750 acres. And within an hour, it was up to 2,500 acres. And I, I haven't talked to anybody or seen anything since I woke up this morning. But um, so devastating. And you know what I think that uh, does not help is all the rain that we had in Arizona this year. No, that's the thing is people are always like, oh, well, you know, rain's bad for fire. It's not. It, it, if it's in a drought, nothing grows. So, you know, then it's not a bad fire there season. foliage everywhere. Yeah, so when you've got a lot of growth, you tend to have more fires. But remember last year, like Flagstaff, like up by Flagstaff was on fire for a long time. Because, and I only know that because we went to Lake Powell and we couldn't go through a certain part because it was... Um, on fire. Well, this also, is kind of scary because it's right around Scottsdale, Remy. I know. And Scottsdale is extremely populated and very closely populated. Like they're all on top. Yeah, of the uh, but the little... this the city itself is um, a desert skate, so it mm -hmm. won't make, it won't make its big march towards the towards the inside. There's one fly in my office, so you will see me. One. Just, one just one just one so my favorite holiday is my favorite holiday which happens to be james birthday is right around the corner i can't wait so what are you guys doing for fourth of july uh this is the one time of the year that we are home and then we have a party it's the one time of the year that all of our friends and family gather and we just have a big lake day and have fun i'm rearranging my camera so I, oh no there's more mess there hold on i'm trying to get less oh, you're hiding a mess right now i a lot of messes right now i hear ya. Well, you look beautiful this morning by the way it's the tan the glow i have one too even though i don't look like it i look kind of pasty white right now I'm not yeah, yeah. I didn't wear a hat the last couple of days, which is not great for your skin, but it makes me look real tan. So you didn't wear what? A hat. Oh, a hat. A hat. Yes. Yeah. Protect your your face. Your I should be, but I didn't. All right. Anything else new before we move no, on? Nothing's here? new. I don't know what we're doing for Fourth of July. It is almost James's birthday. My boys both lost in All Stars, devastatingly. And that will also be part of our conversation. Um, so baseball season is done. And after sitting in the blowing wind and heat. I would be like. And James is like, the bad part is that I'm almost not sad that they didn't make it up. So. Um, Remy, I'm currently doing four nights a week of baseball. And I don't know how parents do it. I don't. Yeah, but you know, you got to think about it. That's what they think about us with horses, too. I know, but that's my passion. So that's a little different. I try to do that. I do try to do that. But I'm like, running my kid to baseball four nights a week is not my passion. Um, but I'm trying. I I'm. We do it. We do the thing. We don't miss. Only excused ones. I don't know. Yeah, so that's actually what we're going to talk about today, right, is what motivates you 
how do you motivate others? And then it's ugly stepsisters. Can you teach ambition or just work ethic? Or can you even teach work ethic? Because I'm still out on that one too. I don't think so. <laughs> you know, when I worked in corporate, we took tests that tested you on this exact topic. It tested you on what motivates you and it asked all kinds of questions so they could get to the bottom of their employees. Were they motivated by money, recognition, power? Uh, what were some other ones? I can't remember. I just remember the, you know, money is an obvious one for what motivates most people are motivated by money. Um, the recognition one, I cannot think of the other ones. Yeah, so. Do you know what motivates you? Uh, I've been tested, I know. <laughs> oh my God, people are sending me messages too early in the morning. It's not even six o'clock here. Um, I, I want to have enough, it's not just pure money, right? I want to have enough money to do the things I want to do. But no, I think for me, it's it's recognition and helping others, right? So it's not just, it's not purely altruistic that I just want to help others, but I do enjoy the psychological part of drawing people out. But no, I want recognition. And, in, and it's like, I don't just want recognition for me, right? Like I want people to look at me and admire how well I can do things or how strong I am. Not just that you're successful because motivation and success aren't always the same thing. I was talking to, um, well, we were talking about Bronson yesterday and then I was talking to, um, FYI for anybody who lives in California, you might see him with Remy or the Finley soon. <laughs> it always looks better out here until they get here. Although I will let him swim every afternoon. So there's that. We live on a lake. He gets to swim anytime he wants to. Yeah, For those not. of you who may not know the story, he's pissed about summer school. He's pissed that he had to start summer school yesterday. And I didn't tell him until it was time. And he told me that I was the worst mom ever. I am single-handedly ruining his summer. And that when he got back from homeschool yesterday, or summer school yesterday, that he was packing his bags and going to California this morning. I said, that's fine, but you have to do this, the summer school first. So... Yeah, not so sure who he's gonna go live with the Greers or Finleys? Maybe they'll have to double time him. I'm not sure, but you guys can have joint custody. <laughs> it's it's one of those things though. Like so, James are talking yesterday, and this, so then James are talking about um, opportunities, right? You see a lot of people that had very similar opportunities with different outcomes. So I so it. If I had been given some of the opportunities that someone else would have had, maybe I would have gone farther, right? Because I've always been ambitious and driven because I do want to be successful, right? I don't want money for money's sake, but I want to build and I don't know how to stop building empires or businesses. It does not shut off for me, right? This is always what we're doing. What would it be like to come home and be happy with just enough, right? Like that. What would it be like to have the nine to five to be done, to come home and make the dinner and have enough time to be happy about taking your kid to baseball? Would you still be happy about taking your kid to baseball? Right. Like, but you think about these things because that's the picture that you're that you're given when you're younger. Right. If you have the right job and you make enough money, then you've got all this leisure time for whatever. So, first of all, how do you get motivated enough to get the job? Does the job suffice to make you happy? And is that what motivates you? Or is it your family that motivates you? And are you never tired? Because when you look at the pictures of people, you know, on the lake trips or barbecuing on a Sunday, like for us, we barbecue on a Tuesday because we're busy most weekends, right? Like we don't have that thing. And I think that people seek it. Now, I don't seek it. And I say this speaking out of turn for my husband because he looks at the pictures like you and I have talked about, right? Like it's the Christmas picture with all the presents wrapped and everyone's happy and there's no trash and nobody's fighting. So you see the picture. So is that what motivates people? Like I said, for me, I, I'm motivated by really ambition. I know that sounds whole. That's a bad motivator. It is for me. Tell me I can't do something. I'm going to show you how well I can do it. 
the the cool thing about people is people are all built so differently and I know from taking the test and I kind of knew it going into taking the test what I was probably motivated by but I would say most people think that they're motivated by money and after taking the test and finding out what I was motivated by which is recognition I would say that most women probably are motivated motivated by recognition because we all we it doesn't matter if you're a stay-at-home mom or if you're working out in corporate America or if you're self-employed we all want to be told that we're doing a really good job even as a housekeeper or as the one who is going to all of the baseball games or the one who is doing all the lessons I am highly motivated by people too I and I know that you are as well and that's the reason it hurts so bad when somebody doesn't like you or you're not somebody's cup of tea I am the same way like I'm very into customer service and serving people I love serving people I love meeting new people I love helping people it's actually more rewarding for me to help somebody else and help myself most days well um, and do you think that's because so again if you're motivated by recognition and I know I am to a point right like I, I know I'm rec I'm motivated by recognition it's because we want to give recognition to people that we don't think are getting recognition in our inner exchanges right like when you have the person in a lesson that doesn't really want to come out of their shell and then you can celebrate small victories with them so now you're recognizing what is good in them versus them letting dictate or letting the world dictate where they should be at as far as a talent or a skill i don't know like i think that i don't know how to answer that question but i will say that a lot of those companies do those tests because they need to know how to to motivate their employees or get the most out of them and when I go back to myself it wasn't about the money they could have gave me more money but they probably wouldn't have got more work out of me or I wouldn't have worked harder for them but if they dangled a little prize out in front of my face or uh, some contest because we did lots of contests. They would do lots of contests, like get X amount of new customers on this product or whatever. And you could win, I don't know, I won all kinds of shit. But I, it came from the heart on when I was trying to help my customers with these products, I wasn't just pushing stuff on them that wasn't going to sell for them or that didn't matter. Um, but for some reason, that kind of stuff intrigued me. Um, I don't know. I think it's a little different now that I'm self-employed too. I will say that. That's, just, um, that's what I was just gonna ask you. If you took the test today, would it be the same answers as before? I think that it's still probably, <clears throat> recognition um we all have to be motivated by money to a certain degree because we need it to live i'm not materialistic at all and that probably surprises a lot of people but materialistic is something that i am not i there's a lot of people who like to have a lot of things and their things are what make them happy would you agree yeah that is not me. Like, I do not care that I have no living room furniture still. Like, it does not bother me. It bothers a lot of people around me. And I'm like, I- On a side note, you should just get a lot of like the old beanbag chairs and let's go straight 90s also, and inflatable chairs. Agree, that would be really cool. Except for I have dogs and they would be disgusting. That's true. <laughs> um, but, <coughs> 
it is hilarious to me that <coughs> other people are bothered by the fact that I don't have furniture. And now I think that it's gotten in my head, like, just kind of like, half it. Like, I'm going to show these people that I win. <laughs> because I don't care. You know what I'm saying? No, and it's, it's like, uh, and I'm the same way. Like, I don't. I know you are. You are not materialistic at I don't all. need a lot of things. However, the things that I want, I want nice things of, right? Like, I want nice saddles. I want nice horses. But part of that is not just because I have to have nicer things than other people. I'm using them all the time, right? Like, yes. if I spend I'm a lot of money on a saddle. Too. Like, outside like, of my work life. Like, in my... Dude, I wear, like, $19 shirts from Amazon. This is my... This is my this is my work attire. Um, we don't need things in our life to make us. No, and, and I don't. Really. Like, I'm the worst shopper. Like, if you go with me to NFR, I can make it through each of those convention centers in, like, an hour and a half. Because I don't even like to go. Like, I don't stop. I'm just like, yeah, I don't need it. It's hot. We're good. Just keep moving. Um, no, but I, and I think as, so like as a trainer, as a coach, as a teacher, you also have to find out what motivates people. So, um, I, I think it's deep down that it is recognition for a lot of people. They want to be recognized that they're doing better. They want to be recognized by a win. They, they want to hear their name announced. I mean, they're not doing it for the money. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of um, hobbies or things that we do that you do not get paid for. Correct? No, there's a lot of things that people do that they don't get paid for, and I think it's easy to say it's. I think it's easy to say that it's money, right? Like when you when someone asks you, it's like, oh, I want to make a lot of money. Okay, but what do you want to make a lot of money for? I do know a lot of people who are highly motivated by money, like they will try many different things to obtain like uh, it's like you said so had they paid you more at your job would you have been more efficient mm -mm. would you have worked harder no no because money wasn't your motivator and i see the same thing with guys that we work with right if they paid you more would you do more no but i deserve to be paid more okay well, why are they going to pay you more if you're not going to do more right no um the other thing that motivates me is a little bit of a challenge. Like if you tell me that it's easiest to equate me or equate this to the customers that I used to work with. Like if you told me that there was an account that was a large account that nobody could crack, they couldn't get close to the people, they couldn't get a sale out of them, I would make it my mission. Um, and there are probably a lot of companies who loved that about me because that was part of the recognition. Like, well, she was able to correct that account. I liked that. And I did do that. And I was proud of that. But now <coughs> I care. But back then, I would spend a year trying to get close to someone until they got to the point where they trusted me enough to give me their business. Yeah, I, and it's like I, I was just thinking about the thing with recognition, right? So in our business, and it's in a lot of businesses that are based on customer service and competing, um, I'm not going to be for everyone. You're not going to be for everyone. James isn't going to be for everyone. Brandon's not going to be for everyone. And you get questions. I, I get it, and I get it more than men, right? You get people that question your credentials. Why should I listen to you? Well, first of all, you came to me, so I don't know why this is a question. Because that's always the one that gets me. I'm like, you came here, and you're not going to listen to me, which is fine, because you're still going to pay me my money. <laughs> but at what point, I'm like, how much more do I have to prove to you? How much more do I have to win? How much better do I have to be for you to pay attention or you to listen? And so for me, that's where the recognition kind of ends, where I'm just like, I get tired of proving myself time and time again. And I think that's why I moved to being more motivated by helping people, honestly, right? Because it didn't, it's, at, at the end of the day, it's just like money. It doesn't matter how much I win. It doesn't matter how many buckles we have back here. Are they great? Are they great markers of achievement? Yes, they are. 
and they're pretty to look at and they're glittery. But at the end of the day, that's not what fills my soul, a job being well done. And that sounds so cheesy, a job being well done and me knowing that I did what I was supposed to do makes me happier than someone patting me on the head and telling me I did a good job. I think that women are different. Most women are different than most men when it comes to um, those questions with people. Like we were just talking about somebody coming to you asking for help and you being offended. Like, well, no, you came to me and asked for help. Like, what do I have to prove? In my experience, most men like that just, they don't, did that just happen? They don't even recognize that it happened. You know what I mean? Where I would take it very personally and I would probably be like, well, what the hell? I mean, this person's messing with my mind right now. They're the ones who came to me and now I have to prove myself. What? But yeah, it's it, uh, it's not just that men don't recognize it. They don't get it as much, right? Like you were in corporate they don't, America. They don't. Right? I you were in corporate America. Care. And I've dealt with this in enough proof no, projects no. at university. And I've seen it happen, right? Like where I say something and it's disregarded. And then a male colleague says something or a male board member on the same committee as me says something. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I literally just said that. It just whoo, wiped right by you. They didn't even change the words. They didn't even do me the justice of changing the words. So it's, you know, but again, it's not even worth being pissed off about because you know what it is. So I just find self-worth in something else. I find my, and, and I'm the same way. It's not so much a challenge, right? Tell me I can't do something. Tell me. That'll be fun. I'll do it just to spite you, to show you what a petty bitch I can be. And I don't no, want to. Be. I don't feel like. I mean, it's a great quality, and it's not even like. It's not. I don't feel like that is being spiteful or. I. I it should be gritty. Sure. It's being gritty, right? Like we talk about it with horses. It's showing. It's the, it that goes I'm, back to the recognition, though, Remy. Yeah. You want to be recognized for that one who went in there and got the job done that everybody else said was impossible. I, I mean, it's kind of a sick trait that we would want that headache, but I understand that. And I do believe that it goes back to the recognition part of it. And that's the thing with money too. Like you could get a big raise and be super successful making loads of money, but who's gonna know about that? But if you go in and crack somebody who is the toughest egg anybody's ever seen and the one that caused the most problems or you cracked the thing that was the biggest problem or the biggest everybody's biggest headache everybody's gonna know about it and well and it's the same thing as thinking about with money right they say they're motivated by money right they want the fancy cars and the fancy watches and they want all this well, did you need those things or did you want them as a marker of your wealth from your success? Right. So again, it's recognition. It's a twisted way to get recognition, but it's recognition. I do so well that so that I can have all these things and show you um, <coughs> the wealth I've accumulated. But it's so going back to baseball, uh, Trent, which is my third one, embarrassed me like a lot. Like, I can't wait to hear. I wanted to rip his skin off in front of everyone. What did he say? Uh, he didn't say. And he's not usually my diva. He gets upset, but he is not my diva. That is a, that's the title that usually goes to Brayden. So um, they were down. They put him at second. He missed a ball that he never misses. Fair enough. Shakes it off. He's seven. It's okay. I, it's not about him missing the ball. It's the look of pure dejection that comes across his face and into his shoulders. And if you've ridden with me enough, you know that I tell you, you cannot drop your head. You cannot drop your shoulders. You cannot look defeated. Mm -hmm. This is like a mantra for me, right? Your body, you cannot have a physical manifestation of dejection and losing, right? 
winning is a mindset. Losing is a mindset. Like that's the other thing is losing and winning, they're mindsets. You have got to practice with a purpose. You've got to strive to be a winner. You have to learn how to win. You have to learn how to lose. So this is the one ball and they pull them and put them in the outfield. Fair enough. They should. So we're down nine to nothing. Uh, we get one kid on base or maybe one or two kids on base. T hits like a phenomenal double, scores two runs, starts the rally. We're back six to nine. Okay, I'll use a couple more runs and we're back in it. And the machine, because it's off the pitching machine, was a little funny. They move T up at his next at bat. They move him up farther in the box. And they shouldn't have, but they did. So he hits and it's in a different spot on the ball. Now this kid's hit doubles all year. All year. And like he would have hit. Had the cones been where they were during the regular season, he would have had home runs in this postseason, but they didn't. They moved him back another 80 feet. So, hits a pop fly, gets caught by a very good kid, out. And he's like, I lost the game for us, which he didn't. There's two more outs after him. I lost the game. Now, this is their last game for All-Stars, and he is sobbing in the dugout. And again, cry on the inside like a winner, friend. We all cry. He's seven. No, I don't care. And it's not even about the crying. It's about that. When it came time, he didn't want to thank his coaches. He didn't want to go out for the picture. Any of those. I don't care that you're even crying. You thank the people that got you there. And this yeah. is a team. This is a team sport. And you looked like such an asshole. And on top of that, you make me look like an asshole because I didn't do this to you. This is intrinsic to who he is. And I will give you the other backstory to this. So I, I look like all of that. Like I look like I've made this kid mad or sad because he didn't win. But you were really out there probably grabbing him by his little arm being like, quit this shit. And, not and I just, le I actually left him, right? I left him because he doesn't get better from you getting after him. And usually if you just leave him alone and there's another mom that was on our team in the regular season and all these people were talking to him. She goes, leave him alone, give him 30 seconds and he'll stop. But the more you talk to him, the worse it gets, right? Cause he's got to get it all out. But when he was three is how far back this goes. When he was three, he started playing T-ball on Braden's team because they just kept losing players, right? So he's got like the tiny little plastic mitt that just goes past their fingertips and a ball gets hit to him and he puts his glove down. And because it's like the tiny plastic mitt, the ball bounces right out and he goes <sighs> and the coach looks at me and he's like did you teach him that like he's mad that he lost the ball and i was like i did not teach him that he just wants to win and puts a lot of burden on his shoulders to win that isn't coming from me but it looks like it's coming from me because i'm intense and james is intense and i just so again how i have to mold that right i need so the intensity different though I, I need the intensity from him I just don't need the temper tantrum that comes after when he doesn't win. But we ran into it with Brayden, who is my prima donna and my diva. And also very gritty, right? I will say for both T and Brayden is they're gritty. It took T, I think what disappointed me was it, first of all, the disrespect for his coaches. It's disrespectful. I don't care that he's seven, that's disrespectful. They are doing this out of their own time and their own free will, you will respect the time that they put into you and the effort they put into you. <coughs> uh, Brayden, we were having another bad uh, all-star game in another, because they were playing on separate all-star teams. And he's standing out there with his legs crossed. And granted, he'd get baseball ready every time the ball went into the machine, but he needs to stand there ready to, looking like he is ready to play. So we call timeout and James and I go out there and I'm like, uh, and James goes, I'll sit. He's like, you don't do this. You don't quit on me. And I told him, I was like, I will sit you for the rest of all stars. You will sit on the bench because again, this is disrespectful. You have 11 other kids out here playing. You need to play or don't play, but don't waste their time. Don't waste my time. And you know, Braden snapped out of it. But again, what motivates my boys is winning. It's, and what's hard with baseball, and I know I've touched on it a lot here, and if you're not a baseball parent, it sounds really dumb, and you're now a baseball parent, um, baseball's an unsuccessful sport. It really is, right? Unforced errors, forced errors, uh, your batting average, all of these things are highly unsuccessful. 
it's like ranch sorting. I mean, honestly, we should be prepared for it after sorting to not have a right. lot of sick, you know, and I, I don't mean like success, but when you have kids that are used to being very good at whatever they do and they come up against a challenge and coming off of another postseason in playoffs where they played very well and it's not that they didn't play well, right? But baseball's outcome is not necessarily the result of try. So for me, I have to find a way to motivate them that isn't checked off by a win box, right? Well, here's the deal. I mean, parenting is, it's hard. It's the hardest thing that anybody will ever do. And it actually really doesn't matter if it's freaking dogs or kids. It's hard on both ends. Um, Remy, I mean, I, you can be mad at that little shit. <laughs> you can be mad at him all you want, but you and I both know damn well that no parent sat out there and was like, look what she taught that little shit. Look, she taught him to be a sore loser. No, they know better than that. If you didn't go get him out of the dugout and go get in the car, this was a terrible game. This is all your fault. And you should, you should be crying because your team played like shit. Now let's go get ice cream and reward them for that. They know that you're not doing that. So, I mean, I take sportsmanship to a high degree too. Like I extremely believe in it. Like, and I've always tried hard to teach my kids that. And I ripped them off of horses and I don't care if they're bawling or not. When they come out of the pen, and my kids used to cry all the time. When they would lose, they would cry. They would go into the pen, they'd DQ, they would come out crying. I'm like, you guys have got to quit this. Go shake the hand of your competitor, tell them thank you. I don't care if it was your fault, their fault, whoever's fault. Go tell them thank you. And I would rip them off of horses. And it has gotten easier. They still revert back sometimes to wanting to be a little baby, but some days too, I do too, damn it. <laughs> but I will always say thank you. Sometimes it has to be after I'm done pouting and having my baby fit, but I will. And same for them. And it is hard lessons to learn when you are little. It's hard lessons to learn as an adult, but it's, at the end of the day, it's a life lesson that we're paying money to get taught, basically. Yeah. And baseball, for us, like, I'm the mom who sits out there and drinks water and eats sunflower seeds and half-ass pays attention to what's going on. I told him to slide into first base the other day, and one of the other moms turned around and goes, I can't do that. And I was like, just yelling things I have no idea about. I don't know. Automatic out, man. <laughs> no, it's uh, like that's a like James and I always joke that we're like Clark, cry on the inside like a winner, like winners do. You cry on the inside. Yeah, but they wouldn't learn that lesson. That I mean, no, and is, it's uh, honestly this for me, is like, learning a lot of it right does, now, Remy. It it comes down to disrespect. So he's crying, you know, and so um, his coach from the regular season. Rich goes over and I can, and I just leave him, right? I look up and I see Rich is like sitting on the, cause it's like these big concrete steps, right? And he's sitting above him and I can see that he's talking to him and he's looked down at him, but he's not looking at him. So then he looks up and he's just kind of talking quietly to him. And then uh, I talk to Rich, I go, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to spank him? Am I supposed to hug him? He's like, just leave him alone, right? Like it sounds horrible. It looks bad from the outside. And so if you look at the picture that I posted on my personal page, um, of T's team, like all the kids have got like the big muscles and he's on his coach's shoulders <laughs> looking down <laughs> and I think still crying because uh, his coach Zach went and grabbed him. He's like, T, you will be in this picture. Come on, bud. You're going to be on my shoulders. I don't care. You'll be in this picture. So I was lucky that the the coaches kind of understood. Well, some of the coaches understood <laughs> not all of them, but it's... I honestly uh, think it's, I mean... Um... And the that's thing, the like, moment that's on us, Remy, as parents. That is our time to shine because we're teaching them. And I'm like, you and James might be super pissed at him right now for doing that. But that is like, what is the word that I'm looking for when you have to like, keep 
every all the time. What's that word? Jesus. Continuous. That's that it, that will work. It is not what I was looking <laughs> for, but yes, like the continuous affirmation to him about how to act. I mean, you're going to be just fine with that child. And sometimes it takes a long time to get through their freaking little skulls. Yeah, it's just uh He's strong-willed. That's what I call Bronson, strong-willed. Yeah, it's like, so we talk about kids being different, right? So Kyle, and I was talking to another... Um, I was talking to T's head coach, actually, not Rich, but Richard, because he had Rich and Richard this year. So Richard, his all-star coach, I was talking to him, and we were talking about intensity, and he's like, your boys play so well, and what do you do? And I was like, well, there's a couple reasons I think my boys play well. And one of them, honestly, is situational awareness, right? So when you grow up around horses and cattle, when we tell you to move, there's grievous bodily harm that can happen to you if you don't move and something is running at you, right? Like, you're... Ranch kids, farm kids, they're always kind of aware of all their situations. They're reactive. Right? And then, so they're active, they're athletic, but, they're, you know, they're always seeing what's going on. It's not just what's right in front of them. There's always stuff going on. And I said, the other thing that we do is we expect a lot out of our kids. You expect a lot out of your kids, right? Like, enough is not enough and not in a bad way. Like, it's how, how do you pull the talent out of them? How do you show them how great they are? How do you push them just far enough to where they feel uncomfortable, but still safe enough with you that you push that boundary? And the same thing with clients, right? Push that boundary a little bit farther so that they still feel safe, but you show them a whole new level of greatness that they're capable of. And Kyle is my tricky one for that because Kyle refuses to embrace how truly awesome he can be. Right, how truly talented he can be because he does, his motivation is the fear of failure. He will do nothing that he's not great at. Or it's not that he won't do it. He'll do it. He doesn't act like he cares because if he cares and he comes up short, that he feels like he himself is not enough. And it's like, dude, you but didn't win. Hand, it's okay. Look at Kyle when we were in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Kyle, Kyle doesn't like to ride horse as much as some of the other kids he tolerates it but it's not his passion yeah but the other kids were like come on kyle you got this let's do it when kyle likes the recognition too 100 percent. he likes the recognition he likes having a little group behind him telling him you got this and for most of those kids they like doing that no, Which is it's so awesome. It is like a, it it's it's, it is like we have this really great. You know, we talk about on here a lot. We have this great extended family in penning and sorting, where we really are blessed with an awesome group of kids, even if they don't see each other all the time, right? That are pushing each other and motivating each other. And it's funny too because you watch the kids try different tactics to get, and they're not even trying to be mean, right? Like. They're not trying to, like, if they tease a kid, it's not because they're trying to put them down. They're trying to draw something else out of them, right? I was nice and that wasn't motivating. So let's kind of rib you a little bit and see if that works. Okay, if that doesn't work, then we're going to try this. We're going to try that. And, um, yeah. yeah. Sure. It, I mean, I think there's just a, such a good group of kids. Um, speaking of kids, we've been struggling lately and, there is going to be no moment motivating because it's just going to happen. Our kids do not want to ride with each other. And I don't give a shit because you are brothers at the end of the day, you are blood. You will be your great, each other together. You will be each other's greatest teammates in life yeah. in this, um, but they don't, they don't think that they get along and they hate riding with each other. And it's just a constant fight because one doesn't do this right and the other doesn't do this right. And you know what the real fight is about? They, they do a terrible job of communicating with each other in there. And, uh, yeah, I, well, look, when Brayden and Kyle ride together, the best is the looks they, and I've seen them, right? Like I've, I'm guilty of the looks with James too. Like James and I are also guilty of it because. Because it's easier to look at them like they're the asshole than you are because you ride yeah. together all the time, right? Like there's a built-in excuse. 
Well, if Bronson would have done this, oh, if Bro Bodie would have just done that. Okay. Well, why don't you guys concentrate on your own job instead of their job? Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, so when we were at RSNC finals, it was a big, a big to-do. They set up their youth rides, and they did not pick each other. And I was pissed. Brandon was pissed. Because at the end of the day, you're brothers. Look at how many family members have made uh, the sport theirs. They've gotten yeah. good at riding with each other. But it's not just this sport. There's a lot of things that go back to family. So my kids, we sat them down after that. We were pissed. We weren't going to scratch any of their rides to put them together because they had made the teams and that was the deal. But the deal has always been that they ride together. And so they were both giving us their their thoughts on why they should never ride together again and how this one sucks and this one does this. And, and we both just looked at them and said, you know what? We're the ones who foot the bill. We don't care if you trash out every single time. You're going to continue to trash out until you get it right. Yeah. And I don't give a shit. Like, if I have to come out to the out gate and separate you two like a bunch of baboons every time, I guess I will. But you two are the ones that are going to look like idiots in front of all of these people that you now call friends. So is that how you want to act and what you want to do? I just, like, I have no time for it. So if somebody sees me beating the shit out of my children at a show, it's, that is the reason probably. So, Yo, it's a, uh, yeah, man, children. You know, and the funny thing is, is There's they, something. they are genuinely happy for each other. Like, on the but again, success. again, that's a recognition thing, right? Like, they each want to be better than the other one. Oh, and I, God. <laughs> and it's the same thing. Like, I'll compliment, like, I'll, like, so T had a really good game, right? And I compliment T and Brain's like, well, did you see my out? And I was like, I can compliment him. <laughs> without detracting He's back there with a little check from you yes you know and it's and kyle's the same way and it's they all want recognition and it's uh and it's the same thing like you talk about ambition like i talk about ambition a lot right i don't think you can teach ambition people are there I, feel, I was just gonna go into that too god i feel like some days we're just on the some days this is a good episode today Rick. Um, we're not even gonna talk about why until we're about done um, it's ambition is something you can't teach. And again, I had this conversation with James last night and the military came up and he's like, look, cause I was like, you can't teach ambition and you can't, I was like, and you can force work ethic, but you can't teach work ethic either. Right. You can leave it and not tend to it and let it just die. But like people that don't have a great work ethic, they're never going to have a great work ethic. Because it's not about punishment. It's not about money. Again, how do you motivate those guys that are like on that borderline? And people that have a great work ethic, they're going to have it no matter what, because that's part of who they are. So James starts talking about the military and he goes, look, it's helped a lot of people. Like, you know, they get up, they do this. And I said, that's not ambition, right? You have to be up at six o'clock. Okay. Because there's like a very definitive reaction. If you're not, it's not teaching work ethic. It's teaching them to be responsible for certain things. But, you know, if you put three guys in the same boat in the military, let's let's talk about the military because it's easy, right? The ambitious guy, he's going to rise through the ranks. The guy that's kind of motivated by money and a little bit of success and being comfortable, right? Like having enough but not really wanting everything, he's going to rise a little bit. And the guy that is not ambitious is going to stay a grunt his whole, his whole military career. See, I kind of think, I kind of think, um, because- Sorry for all of you watching, there's a fly that's attacking me. I know, I see you, like, <laughs> uh, for me, when I was working at Corporate America, one of my favorite things was managing people. Um, I, I liked it. I kind of got good at it. Um, I think of ambition a little bit like the Pavlov dog thing. Um, if you find out what motivates them and you can figure that out and you can do it in a way that they don't 
know that you're doing they don't know that you're conditioning them to salivate when the bell goes off yeah if you can if you can do that if you can get inside their head and do that you can create an ambitious person but you have to know what motivates them um no and again so that's motivation and ambition right you can do i don't think you can teach work ethic no and i think that with ambition right like but there's some people that are and and this isn't even a negative, right? But it sounds like a negative coming from ambitious people, right? Some people, enough will always be enough, right? Yeah. They're, they're, like, their motivator is just to be comfortable. So they don't have to push past that. And you need people that want to be comfortable because those are the people that take the jobs that a lot of other people don't necessarily want to stay in. Doesn't mean that they don't do them. They don't necessarily want to stay there. And again, if you're working for corporate America, you're already motivated a little bit. You're yes. already ambitious. So it's easier to find no, that. I feel like people in corporate America, I feel like as years pass, their ambition leaves and their motivation A hundred percent. But I think it's easier to wake that ambitious beast when you find the right motivation than like, I, I deal with it, like, especially when people bring kids to us, <laughs> they're like, oh, hey. I want her to do this. I'm like, okay. She doesn't want to do these things, right? Like, this is not her jam. It does not matter what carrot we dangle in front of her. Find something that she enjoys because this ain't it. And then you'll hear from them like years later. It's like, oh, well, we did this and she was amazing. I'm like, great. Awesome. And I'm super happy for you. I don't count it as a failure on me when I told you that whatever this was was not for her. But I do, I think motivation does lead to ambition. I really, I, I think you're right in that. Motivation can rekindle and lead to ambition because if you show people that they're working for something, whatever it is, right? Recognition, fame, comfort, certificates on your wall that says you were the sales leader for the- I, You know what? <laughs> Brandon does a real terrible job of giving me the recognition that I need in those certificates. I don't get any more certificates. I will print some out for you and send them to you. Thank you. Oh, you know, I mean, with the self-employment gig too, um, like I said, my ambitiousness has changed or what motivates me has changed. I have to be ambitious obviously i want to be though because this is my passion um this is our passion like i guess we like to work hard and we've had a series of new things that we've tried like ever since i quit my job before that we've been trying new things and i can't even say it's about the money i mean good things have arose from all of it and some days and I don't feel like it's about the recognition either. I feel like it's like something about proving to ourselves that we can do it. So that's what I, was, I think for me, it's like recognition is then morphed into self recognition, right? I, I yeah. did a good job. I did what I was supposed to do. Like, I feel, oh, yeah. I feel fulfilled, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, a. Uh, I see it. I see it in coaching kids, especially I see it in coaching the people that we, um, coach for penning and sorting, drawing out what truly motivates people because money is such an easy answer, right? Money is an easy answer. What motivates you? Money. I like money. I'm really uh, weird dude, I about like it. I like money too. I like nice shit. I'm not saying I don't like yeah. money. And I'm not no, saying I'm that not, I I'm not either. I want people to know that. Like I like <laughs> money, but I don't feel like it's what motivates me a hundred percent. No. And so it's like, you have to find that, that happy medium of what motivates you. And if it's only money, if it's only money, right? Not money to an end. If it's only money, then when does it end, right? When is it enough? Because. <laughs> so you know. I know some, just like you, some extremely wealthy people. And it's money that, that's been in their fam family for generations, that kind of wealth, generational wealth. And. You know what generational wealth gets you? a ride on a sub to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, let me out. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyhow, I feel like a lot of the people that I know 
that have that generational wealth. And I've said this for as long as I can remember. They would rather trade shoes with me, I think, most days. They would rather have my life than their life. And they have a want for nothing. I have all kinds of needs. I don't really have a ton of wants, but I have needs that I need. And my life isn't my life isn't freaking glamorous or anything like that. But it's fun and I'm surrounded by family who loves me. They don't get that. They don't have that. They're always trying to if I have this Lamborghini, that's gonna make me happier. So they get the Lamborghini. And then it's well, if I go on a cruise to Hawaii and then, or I don't know if we can go on a cruise to Hawaii. I don't know. Like some freaking, like, I'm going to go on the submarine. Brack is a big submarine. cruiser if you all didn't know this. I'm going to go on the submarine thing. Yeah. Do that. Go visit the Titanic. Then I'll be happier. Then they do that. And they make it back alive. And then there's something else. And they can never find happiness in what they have. Something else has got to be the answer to making them happy. That's what they think. And so I do think that there's something to be said about an ordinary life, which our life probably isn't freaking ordinary and yours isn't either, but it's a good life and we don't fixate on the things that we do or don't have. No, it's like, uh, I was joking with uh, James because we need a new horse trailer. I haven't bought a new horse trailer in a long time. And uh, he's like, man, you always want something. Because <laughs> like our fender is cut, like our back bumper on my platinum is coming off because um, it's really low and we haul a lot of cattle in it. So whenever we come out of a driveway, it scrapes. And he's like, we've taken 20 years to pay this one off. He's like, your horse count isn't looking great. Like if you're going to buy a horse trailer. And I was like, if I counted up how many cattle we've hauled in this, the cattle count owes me money for the horse trailer. But again, it's, I don't want a big fancy trailer. I just want another stock trailer that's new, not one that's 20 years old and is whole, you know, 150,000 head of cattle in it. I guess. But it, no, it's like, it's not big once, but um, Matt Cook was interviewed one time, the cow horse trainer, and they were asking, you know, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? What would you have? It goes nicer equipment. That's it, right? He didn't say he would quit training horses. He'd quit farming. He'd do any of that. He just want nicer equipment. And that's what I always think about. Like, if I won the lottery, what would I have? A nicer ranch. That's it. I don't know. I mean, I think about it too. And if, <coughs> excuse me, if I won the lottery, we wouldn't quit working. No. Like, I can't imagine sitting back and watching life go by. We love this life, and I guess we like to torture our bodies and ourselves and <laughs> do all the things. No, and but I, I do, like, that's what I ask. Um, that was always my question for, um, especially, like, in college and even when you talk to people now, like, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? What would make you happy if you had all the money in the world? And... It's a very, it seems like such a simple question because that's what people are always chasing, right? I need the money to do this and this and this. So if you ask James, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do, right? Because I, I had this discussion, you and I've had this discussion privately about my husband and I. Um, when you get fed up with your life, right? If you had all the money in the world, ask yourself that question, what would you do? And if it's not what you're doing for a job, I can't tell you to quit or to go find something else, but you do need to really reevaluate what you're doing, right? If you had all the money in the world, so for James, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? And if he said, go live on a beach and do nothing, which sometimes he says, and I asked him, I said, so do you really, is that really what you want? Because if that's really what you want, then sell everything we have. We'll go buy let's a beach. Let's do it. Car. Yeah, let's do it, right? I go, but really, if you had all the money in the world, what would you have? He goes, the nicest cow, nicer trucks and trailers. Okay. So we're doing the right thing. We might, I mean, we do have gorgeous cattle. So we got, to check that box. But again, right? Like when it comes down to it, what would you really do if you had all the money in the world? Oh, the sun is coming through. I'm making funny things in my face. Oh, I know. Um, the, if you had all the money in the world, then 
what would you have out of it? And that makes a big, it, when you really ask yourself that and really think about the question, it makes a big difference. And then again, what motivates you? Is it just money? Is it success? How do you measure success? Is it recognition? Is it now as I've gotten older and maybe it's just me getting older that it's self recognition. Cause I'm like, fuck you guys. I can't win enough to make the people that don't like me happy. And I don't even have to win to make others happy. So now I have to make myself happy. It's a, it's a crazy, crazy life. And there's no doubt that all of us are motivated by, we're not built the same. We're supposed to be motivated by different things. And hopefully you're, everybody that listens is motivated by good things um, and not bad ones, but uh, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's interesting about the personality test that they gave you in. Uh, Those in are interesting. Like if, if you have not taken one, because there's multiple, there's, there's one that talks about like they find out what motivates you. And I'm, I'm sure that most corporate businesses do it. It's smart because. Yeah. And like, so did you ever have to take the Enneagram tests where they give you numbers? You're like a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, like goes one through 10. So there's multiple versions of that test that you're talking about. And for me, it was a color test. Oh yeah. There's a color quadrant. One. Yeah. Test. Um, that's the Anderson that trail is, one. Sorry. I'm trying to look something up. That one's very psychological about who you are. And I loved that. That was a fun day for me. I, I wish I could remember. Cause there's, um, I'm paying attention to you. I'm not, not paying attention to you. No, you're fine. I'm going to figure that out, what that was. It was a quadrant test, Remy. Yes. And there was four names. Uh, and I can't remember them. It's the, it's usually the bridge builder. No, I think that there's, there's so many different tests like that. The one that I took analytical was one of them. Yeah. If I write them down. I might, I know. Oh, it's, that's, it's, it's introvert. So that's like the, that's introvert, extrovert, analytical and analytical was way and then dreamer. Off. Yeah. Um, I loved taking that test actually. Those it's very, it's just fun to know about yourself. And once you know it, you, depending on what you do in life, you can kind of use it. Um, I'm not a numbers person at all. So that was like easy analytical is not who I am whatsoever. Damn. I wish I could remember the, what they called those specific ones. Cause I would remember I was so, oh, right, right. I I've taken the, like, I like the Enneagram test cause there's uh, nine different things on it. Right. There's the, the reformer, the helper. That's what I was looking up the achiever, the individualist, the investigator, the challenger, the enthusiast, and the peacemaker. So for me, I am an eight and then a seven, which is the challenger and the enthusiast. Now an eight at its worst is a seven and a seven at its worst is an eight. So that's what I am. You were what? And I'm the challenger and the enthusiast. And when you look at them, I am also the investigator. So, uh, this so is that's what, analytic, that could be analytical too. I wonder. So, for, so this is, I will read it to you. I pulled up my results. That's what I was doing on the thing. So personality type five, which is the investigator, that's my second highest score. Generally fives are focused, observant, curious, insightful, expert, studious, complex, perceptive, whimsical, profound, unsentimental, exploratory, and independent. Fives get into conflicts by, and this is going to be perfect, detached by being detached, preoccupied, high strung, isolated, unconventional, unconventional, uncompromising, extreme, and provocative. Ah, it fails me too. Right? The At their best, one. they're visionary, pioneering, innovative, objective, understanding, compassionate, and not attached. Which uh, that's fantastic for me. But my other highest score is the eight, which is generally eights. That's the challenger. Strong, assertive, resourceful, independent, determined, action-oriented, pragmatic, competitive, straight-talking, shrewd, and insistent. We get in trouble by being blunt, willful, domineering forceful, defiant, confrontational, bad-tempered, rageful, cynical, and vengeful. 
and at base at best eights are honorable heroic empowering generous gentle constructive initiating decisive and inspiring okay so here here are the one this is the one that i took the four personality types are analytical driver amiable and expressive and i was an expressive driver that's what i was yep. so yeah so uh i uh it's 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 very funny because I made James take the same test and he has vastly different results than I do. Oh, it's good to know though. I mean, like after you take it, you're like, oh yeah, that is me. For good yeah. or bad. That's like uh, when you take the, I don't know, the other personality test, I always end up being like the, like the wisdom seeker because I care what motivates people and myself and knowledge more than anything else. And I'm like, yeah. I don't mean to answer those questions that way. Well, Remy, we're closing in on an hour and I feel like this has been a very monumental day. I feel like this is like, we're back on track with this one. Well, hey, it took a little bit to get the freaking train back on the tracks, but. <laughs> uh, also next week, I think we're gonna have, I gotta move again. No, no. Mm -mm. Okay, I uh, next week we're supposed to have Crystal Schwanevelt from Dusty Diamond Leather on to talk to us about. Oh, you've wanted to have for a really long time. I have, and I'm still trying to get Beth Rocky on, but she won't give in to me. So well, and it's also extremely busy right now, probably for Beth, mm -hmm. in early mornings, early early mornings. And That's what happens when you have to ride horses, and now she's moving to Texas, and it's going to be hot, so she's going to be. Yeah, riding but in the middle of the night. Well, um, happy 4th of July to everybody. I hope everybody has a safe one and a fun one with your family. And is friends. that your dog in the background? That is, that is Luna. She's sneezing. Uh, happy 4th of July. Don't blow yourself happy up. Happy birthday, James. Happy birthday, James. Don't lose any fingers. Don't catch anything on fire. I, oh, did I ever tell her? Well, there's a lot of people who probably saw and you can't see it anymore, but I had. She had a cast iron. Accident. Second degree burns on my arm. <laughs> it looks really good, actually. I had a cooking accident. Who knew that cooking could be so dangerous? I know. James goes, she's going to blame you for cast iron. I said she was using cast iron. Before. Oh, I love cast iron. Yeah, but now I am a little scared to use it. So guys, so. when you use oil in a skillet and you add things to it. So you have to do what like I do. Water kind of like the, the oil mixing. And it went I, I kind of do like the throw and drop right to it. The... Yeah, I was like, ah. <laughs> oh, and then, um, so I'm like scared to death of needles. And I did when we were at RCC. Did you have to pop happened. them? What? Did you have to pop them? No, they popped on their own. But I was like, in order for it to heal, you kind of had to leave it open. And it was so stinking hot. But yet once they started popping, I had to keep it covered because it be so dirty so anyhow I was cleaning stalls one morning and I had it unwrapped and Robin Westner came around the corner on her little scooter to visit me and she's like I feel like you need to have that thing wrapped what where are your kids why aren't they doing this and I'm like it's okay I've got this and she's she's given me the scolding for not having it wrapped and I need to be careful because I'm around for shit and Anyhow, I, like a couple days later, I went and sat with Robin and Stacy and a few other people and Robin was concerned that I didn't have a tetanus shot. And I was like, oh, I have, I don't, I have no idea, Robin, if I have a tetanus updated tetanus shot or not. Well, I think that you should go get one. And I'm like, you and what army is going to hold me down so I can get a tetanus shot? I'm like, I'm fine. I'm not getting a tetanus shot. Uh huh. You gotta watch out. Robin will mother. She'll mother everybody. She's like, oh, I can take your ass, and I'm like, oh, I'm not getting one. And don't don't challenge her. Just so you know. I know, I know. She used to work in a prison. So, all right. Well, hope everybody has a safe and happy. Fourth of July weekend. Um, yeah, I'm just so excited that we got through today without one incident. No internet problems. I know. That's what I'm saying. 
Well, and connecting to a truck, no internet problems. A good, a good cohesive topic. The stars align today. All right, until next time, be humble. Be bold. Be bold, be humble. Be bold, be brave, be humble. Everyone, again, she came up be with it over a year ago, so she <laughs> should know it. She doesn't. I do. I know. That until so next week, be bold, be brave, be humble. We love you all. Have a good 4th of July. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, Remy. Bye.